rhythm that will continue all the way into our next goal, a proton in the nucleus of a carbon atom beneath the skin on the hand of the sleeping man at the picnic. Ten to the ninth meters, ten to the eighth, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We are back at our starting point. We slow up at one meter, ten to the zero power. Now we reduce the distance to our final destination by 90% every 10 seconds, each step much smaller than the one before. At 10 to the minus 2, 1 one hundredth of a meter, 1 centimeter, we approach the surface of the hand. In a few seconds, we'll be entering the skin crossing layer after layer from the outermost dead cells into a tiny blood vessel within. Skin layers vanish in turn. An outer layer of cells, felty collagen. The capillary containing red blood cells and a roughly lymphocyte. We enter the white cell. Among its vital organelles, the porous wall of the cell nucleus appears. The nucleus within holds the heredity of the man in the coiled coils of DNA. As we close in, we come to the double helix itself, a molecule like a long twisted ladder whose rungs of paired bases spell out twice in an alphabet of four letters the words of the powerful genetic message. At the atomic scale, the interplay of form and motion becomes more visible. We focus on one commonplace group of three hydrogen atoms bonded by electrical forces to a carbon atom. Four electrons make up the outer shell of the carbon itself. They appear in quantum motion as a swarm of shimmering points. At 10 to the minus 10 meters, one angstrom, we find ourselves right among those outer electrons. Now we come upon the two inner electrons held in a tighter swarm. As we draw toward the atom's attracting center, we enter upon a vast inner space At last, the carbon nucleus, so massive and so small. This carbon nucleus is made up of six protons and six neutrons. We are in the domain of universal modules. There are protons and neutrons in every nucleus, electrons in every atom, atoms bonded into every molecule out to the farthest galaxy. As a single proton fills our scene, we reach the edge of present understanding. Are these some quarks in intense interaction? Our journey has taken us through 40 powers of 10. If now the field is one unit, then when we saw many clusters of galaxies together, it was 10 to the 40th, or 1 and 40 zeros. Yeah, those are speculations based on available facts. Uh, people believe that there is a, you know, when you go to these particle physics, quarks, electrons, protons, we have a category of particles called antiparticles, antiparticles. Electron, then there is a positron, which is the antiparticle of the electron. We have a proton, we have the antiproton. So like that for many particles, which are supposed to be billion blocks of nature, for all these, most of these particles, we have antiparticles. So people believe that our universe, our matter, ourselves, our bodies, our parents, all these buildings, these are matter world. They are formed from electrons, protons and neutrons. Matter, okay. So people speculate if that possibility is there, why not the antiparticles make anti-atoms, anti-matter, anti-earth, anti-universe, 
So people believe that these are two parallel universes. Okay, matter, material universe, and uh, anti-universe formed from anti-matter. So if somebody is sitting here, what's your name, please? Yes, Divan. Divashini. So Miss Divashini is sitting here in the IFS in this auditorium, chair number two. In the anti-universe, anti Miss Divashini is sitting on an anti chair in an anti IFS in an anti auditorium. Okay. So these are two parallel things. People speculate, no experimental evidences. But it does not violate any of the accepted laws. Okay? Time travel. Hmm? Time travel. Time travel. Again, speculations, uh, not contradicted by existing theories. Uh, people have tried various uh, techniques, this teletransport, and all that, but these are mostly speculations. Okay. People believe, they project. As long as it does not clash with any of the existing laws, you can project and predict. But nothing is seen. So, in so chemistry, you yeah. learn that. Uh, and a moving object that has a mass will uh, have a, a wavelength to it. Not chemistry, physics. Yeah, that, that we learn. It's under physics, right? It's yeah, not chemistry, physics. Yeah, I know, but yeah. it's in the quantum. Ah, chemistry section. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we learn it under chemistry. So, uh, yeah. see, uh, so in that we learn that uh, if something that has a mass and is moving at a constant velocity will have a, a wavelength to it. Yep. Uh, so then uh, something that's like, uh, say, um, Electromagnetic wave mm -hmm. is moving at the speed of light, right? Mm -hmm. And it has a wavelength, mm -hmm. which means it has to have mass also. Mm -hmm. But other uh, Einstein says that when something is traveling at the speed of light, uh, its mass is infinite. Mm -hmm. So isn't that a bit controversial? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Two extremes we are talking. Uh, actually, this wave nature of particles is the basis of quantum mechanics to study atoms, molecules, and matter in an atomic scale, in the atomic world. These things does not obey normal Newton's laws, which are applicable to day-to-day things and Robert Mosh and astronomy. So Newton's laws and classical physics cannot be applied to atomic systems. You need quantum mechanics. So it's a quantum mechanical feature that electrons and protons, when they travel at very high speeds, you can, they behave as uh, waves. But Einstein did not actually accept this thing, uh, this idea. But uh, it is found to be true now. The quantum mechanics is uh, truly applicable to describe uh, atomic systems. So you can associate a wave. Fast moving beam of electrons behave very similar to uh, beam of X-rays, which are electromagnetic. Right? So there is no contradiction. Then uh, relativity, which is Einstein's uh, uh, theoretical uh, development, According to the theory of relativity, electron, or any, any, any particle, if it travels at the spe speed of light, the mass, there is a limit, the mass will become infinite. So there is no contradiction. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, to some people. Let us friends. Uh, <laughs> if we want to uh, be a bright face by uh, in physics, uh, how do we? Okay, uh, it's like this. Physics is supposed to be an unpopular subject because I think there's a lot of responsibility on the part of the teachers who teach physics. Now, I fortunately had very good teachers at my O level and A level. So physics was a very fascinating subject for me. Uh, so teachers have a very important role to make the subject attractive to the student. Otherwise, it becomes a boring subject because students don't like mathematics and physics is a mathematical subject. It's not only in Sri Lanka, but even in other countries, physics is supposed to be a tough subject for the students, not popular. But if you're really keen, to get into it. It will become a very interesting, fascinating subject. Uh, and there are physics students from seated like this, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Physics, those who, now in the university there's a new trend 
it was there earlier also. They dropped medicine, dropped engineering, come, come, joined the science faculty. There are the new Colombo, you know, yeah. Join the science faculty. You do either physics special, chemistry special, depending on your interest. You become a scientist, you know, a specialist in that subject area. For example, if you come to Peradeniya, suppose, suppose you are elected to uh, engineering. Uh, excuse me, Adishani. <laughs> Uh, so we are waiting to drag you in to the science faculty, give you a training after four years, if you get a first class or second class in the physics special degree, straight away it's a passport to go to America. But you must come back after getting your PhD. And some of the students, this, this is what I was going to say, seated like this 10, 12 years ago, are now working in research teams in NASA, JPA laboratories, designing mass rover missions, infrared detectors for those missions. Students see that uh, like you. So you are, I mean the, the, the potential is enormous. If you want to do physics or chemistry or any other subject, give up. If you are thinking of giving up medicine or uh, engineering, the evidence are open. And most students, not most, uh, quite a number of bright students because they are bright, they get admitted to medical and engineering uh, also. And the parental push, the social push, society recognizes doctors as a more uh, privileged uh, person. So even though students like to do physics, due to parental pressure, societal recognition and all this, they join the medical faculty. And by the time they realize, I could have done physics, it's too late. <laughs> so if you have a real interest, to be a scientist, the heaven is our open. Right. Any more questions? Any more questions? Talk to one. I want to know about uh, that uh, the contradiction, what is your idea about the contradiction of uh, classical physics and uh, your idea about yeah, the, the mind, uh, no, there are uh, I have that there are some con contradiction between uh, classical physics and uh, modern quantum physics. Uh, for example, that uh, Newton's uh, gravitation laws uh, and you know the uh, equation uh, F equals g uh, n one n two divided by r f square. Uh, r, uh, so uh, and uh, in uh, Quantum uh, physics, uh, I have heard about uh, some contradiction between those things. And also another example, uh, recently uh, discovered that uh, particle moving more than uh, the speed of uh, light. And also it uh, allows uh, one uh, equation of Einstein uh, become uh, that uh, the root become negative uh, and then we are allowed to uh, speak about the uh, unreal world. So, I am asking you what is your idea about those uh, yeah. contradictions? Yeah, it's not a contradiction actually. Newton's laws, I said classical physics, Newton's laws cannot be applied to atomic systems, electrons, protons. Their behavior is completely described by the new theory, quantum theory. Okay, so two different things. You cannot apply these theories and laws which are applicable to ordinary uh, size objects to tiny particles. You need a separate theory, okay? So Newton's laws cannot be applied to electrons, for example. But, but between two electrons, you have the Newton's gravitational pull or repulsion, okay? It is there. But the electro uh, nuclear forces are, electrostatic forces are very, very strong inside the atom. Very, very strong. So this gravitational attraction is very, very weak, right? The other thing, uh, the recent discovery last month in CERN, that is a Central European Nuclear Accelerator Research Laboratory, in CERN, they have beam, a beam of uh, neutrinos to Italy. So the neutrino source is in CERN in Europe, Geneva, and the detector is in Italy. Okay? So they travel so many thousands of kilometers, and this detector detects these neutrinos. So neutrinos are supposed to travel at well, almost velocity of light, okay, according to many, many experiments. But this last month, this particular experiment, when they calculate the distance, uh, they 
uh, they have to uh, explain that assuming that neutrinos travel faster than light. Okay, so that is the experimental observation. And this experimental team, researchers are very confident that uh, of their, their result, but now others are watching uh, because we have to repeat, other groups have to repeat and then accept. Okay, neutrinos can travel faster than visitor light. So until then, uh, there's a question mark. We have to wait and see uh, whether it goes beyond Einstein's theory of relativity. Okay. Any other questions? Or you can send me a cheat by post, care of our Thank you. <laughs>